Welcome to Power Kids, our Christmas show. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to see this before Christmas or after Christmas, but I hope your Christmas is lovely. Amen? Amen. It's good to get gifts. It's good to give gifts. So right now we're going to pray. Father God, we come before you in the name of your son Jesus the ultimate gift, the awesome, most awesome gift in the whole world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for what you've done for us and you keep doing for us. We love you, Jesus. Amen. My name is Mary Stringer and this is Pauline Larson and she has someone with her today. I have Egbert. Yeah. Yeah, we're glad that he's on the show. Oh, yeah, I'm glad that he's here. Where are the kids? Is this a kid show? Where are the kids? Um, well, they're out there in TV land. You can't really see them, but they're watching us. Um, they may even write and, and want to know more about you, Egbert. Oh, okay. Egbert, it's Christmas coming. Are you excited about Christmas? Oh, yeah. I like Christmas. Did you know Jesus was born in a chicken coop? Well, no, no, wait, whoa, wait, whoa. Jesus was born in a chicken coop? Yeah. My mother, Attila the hen, she said so. She wouldn't lie. Well, Jesus was born in a stable, right? And because he had no room in the inn, he was not born in a chicken coop. Well, there were chickens there. Cock was going to crow three times. That's what Jesus told Peter. Yeah, well, that wasn't when he was in the stable. I mean, he was just a baby. Um, I don't think even Peter was alive at that time. Not sure, but I don't think so. Anyway, what else do you like about Christmas? They don't eat chicken. They eat turkey and ham. Did you know in Matthew says Jesus ate locusts and honey? No, Jesus didn't. I think that was his cousin. Oh. Anyway, it's time to have Eugene. You know Eugene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we all know Eugene. Well, Eugene's gone next, and he's going to go over the memory verse. So we need you to say goodbye to the power kids, okay? Bye, power kids. All right. Amen. Whoa, it smells like a chicken in here. Uh, you just missed him. Who? Egbert. Oh, oh, I see him, the guy that has a banana on his nose. No, that is not a banana. That is his <laughs> beak. Sorry. Yeah, you should be sorry. That wasn't very nice. <laughs> well, I don't like chickens. What do you mean you don't like chickens? You better be nice to him. Why? I hear they eat grapes. So <gasps> you look like a grape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, just. Straighten up, mister. <laughs> okay. And we're going to say the memory verse it comes from the book of Matthew. You know, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, this is the first one, Matthew 2.11. I see it. And what does it say? Nothing. What do you mean, <laughs> nothing? You have to read it. Okay, so, Boy, sir, you would, you, <laughs> so would you please read it before the chicken comes and pecks yeah. on your head, Mr. Grape? <laughs> hey. Okay, just please read it. And when they were coming to the mouse. No, it's not a mouse. Oh, house. The rest, please. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother. Was it you? No. <laughs> different Mary, different uh, time. I'm not that old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what did they do when they saw the young child with Mary, his mother? They fell down and worshipped. Worshipped him. And the rest? And when they had opened their treasure chest? Close enough, but it's treasures. Oh, treasures. They presented him they presented it's the same idea as a present but they gave him why don't you just say that <laughs> they presented unto him oh 
He presented unto him gifts. Gold and Frankenstein. No, not Frankenstein. <laughs> they did not give him monsters. Oh, it's Frankenstein's. Why are you laughing? Because that's not what it is. Just say Frankenstein. Frankincense and myrrh. <laughs> it's got two R's. Just say gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Okay. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thank you, Eugene. You're welcome, Miss Mary. Say goodbye, Eugene. Goodbye. <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, now we're going to go over the PowerPoint, which is Jesus is the reason for the season. And, you know, so much goes on this time of year, and people are busy buying gifts, doing this, doing that. But we need to remember it's all about Jesus, and it's about his birth. And we celebrate his birth, but really, his birth, he was born of a virgin, and that we're going to talk about a little bit more. Uh, it's amazing because, for one thing, um, the blood of the Father is what you know the baby gets and so his blood was without sin it was from the father our heavenly through the holy ghost that came upon mary so it was a virgin birth and she was engaged so but we're going to hear more about that in a little bit but the thing we need to understand is most heroes and most famous people celebrate when they celebrate their life they don't celebrate him as a baby they celebrate him as an adult in what they did and of course he went to the cross and we celebrate him as a baby. And, of course, at Easter we celebrate that he went to the cross for us. Now, we're going to go over the four things that we need to learn about God. Number one, God loves me. He loves you, too. Isn't that amazing? The God who created this universe. You go out you look at the stars and you realize he created all that. But he loves you. And he knows you. He knows every hair on your head. And secondly, I have sinned. You know, that's a really amazing, isn't it? He still loves us even though he knows we've sinned and blew it. And it all went back to the garden. I mean, the garden was perfect. There was no sin in there. They had a perfect world. God formed it and put them in it. And they still blew it and sinned. So if that was true for them, how much more for us that live in a, the world like it is today? But the good news is Jesus died for me and he died for you and he literally bought us back. And he gave us all the rights and privileges and promises that are in the New Testament. You need to read the New Testament and see all the things that did, Jesus did and gave to us. It's amazing. We don't have to be broke or sick or depressed or unhappy. He gave us every tool we need to be successful and happy in life and to be a blessing to others. That brings me to number four. You must decide to live for him. We have to make that decision. And you know what? It's not that hard to make when you love somebody to want to please them, is it? And we love Jesus. He first loved us, and then we love him. But the truth of the matter is, he's easy to please. And when you live for him, you'll have a wonderful life. Now, Mary's going to come, and she's going to share about his birth from the Bible. Amen. Okay, if you want to follow, you can look at Matthew 1, 18 through Matthew 2, 11, or Luke 2, 1 through 20. But um, Mary, the Holy Ghost came over her, and she conceived a child. She had a baby in her tummy, in her womb, Jesus. Yeah. The angel Gabriel came and told her that she was going to be the mother of Jesus. Isn't that cool? Not too many people. Well, there's only one person who ever had that honor. It's an honor to carry the Christ child. And um, Joseph was engaged to her. She was his fiancée, and he found out she was pregnant. He's like, oh, oh no, what am I going to do? This is terrible. Because you get married first, then you get pregnant, you have a baby. And she, did, she had it backwards. But you know what? He didn't realize at first that it was God's plan. But an angel came to him at night and said, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for what is in her is of the Holy Ghost, God. It's Father, Son, Jesus, and Holy Ghost 
all three are God. Amen. So he said, okay, fine. I'll take her with me to Bethlehem because it's tax time. Everybody, had, they even faced taxes back then. We do now, and they did back then. And he had to go from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem with Mary, his, his um, fiance. And she was on the back of a donkey, and she was about ready to give birth. That could not have been easy, going all the way from Bethlehem, or from Nazareth to Bethlehem on a donkey nine months pregnant. So they got to the inn, and he said, I'm sorry, but Bethlehem is crowded because of the census. You know, everybody else who is of the line of David had to come to the city of David because of the census and pay their taxes and do what they have, you know, say, I'm of the line of David. Well, they both were. Joseph, Jesus' stepfather, was of the line of David. Yeah. And Mary was of the line of David also. So the prophecy would be fulfilled. God didn't miss one detail. He never does. He's no. so good. So anyway, they went and there was no place to stay. So they had to stay in a stable. Now, I don't know about you, but that's usually a hospital is nice and clean. You got clean sheets. Yeah. It's, you know, they clean the floors with bleach and this, that, and the other. Well, stables are kind of stinky. And Jesus chose, God chose, the lowliest place in the world for his son to be born. To show that he wasn't, you know, stuck up. <laughs> that he didn't have to have the best. Because he loved people from the rich to the middle class to the poor. To the poorest of the poor. He was born in a stable and Mary wrapped him in linen, you know, clothes. It says swaddling clothes. That just means she wrapped him tight so he couldn't move around and scratch himself and get dirty. That's a good thing where he was born, you know, that she'd do that so he wouldn't get dirty and she... Um, put him in the hay to keep because it was soft and warm. So anyway, um, the same night that Jesus was born, there were some shepherds that were out watching their sheep and in the hills outside of Bethlehem. And suddenly a great light split the night sky. Mm -hmm. A star, a bright, shiny star that made it like daylight. Yeah, that's pretty cool. God can do that. God can do anything. And they were like, what's going on? God, help us. And you know what? The angel said, don't worry. I bring you good news. And there was a heavenly host of angels that said, glory to God in the highest and peace to people on earth. Peace because no longer are your sins going to be held against you because the Savior is born. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So they told there's peace, goodwill. You know, in the city of David, Bethlehem, a Savior is born. A king has come. So not only them, but um, they decided they were going to go to Bethlehem. So they left uh, the, at once, and the star was gone, and darkness came down. But you know what? God is so good. He let those lowly, humble shepherds see the Christ child first. So they went to Bethlehem and they saw Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus in a manger. And they said, an angel told us, an angel told us we'd find Jesus, the, we would find the king of kings here, that this, mm -hmm. this baby is a king. Yeah. And you know, Mary and Joseph were listening to this and they were like, wow. Yeah. You know, I know what God told me, but it's coming to pass. Yeah. yeah, because God told, you know, the angels told the shepherds. God told the shepherds, the angels. And then in the east, we're talking about, you know, Mesopotamia and Asia and parts east of Jerusalem, east of Israel. There were wise men. Now, these wise men were astronomers, not astrologer. That's something totally different that we don't touch astronomers study the stars and they knew that that bright star meant a king was born yeah and they like we that's the sign that the king of the jews has been born we got to follow that star that's the brightest star that we've ever seen in the sky that is special because someone special has been born so they said let's go to jerusalem and find this king so they went this was after Jesus was born. They went to Jerusalem for a while, and they found 
Joseph and Mary and the toddler Jesus. They found them in a house. It says three wise men only because there's three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But there were so many that they caused a stir. That, you know, everybody's like, wow, why are all these guys from the east coming, you know, on camels? It was a whole caravan. Yet yeah, not three. It was a caravan. Mm -hmm. And so they presented it, presented Mary and Joseph with gifts for the baby Jesus. Not just gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but a bunch of things. Yeah. And it was enough that they could sell that and go to Egypt to protect Jesus. Because remember, King Herod was not happy about a king of the Jews being born. God provides. If you make Jesus your Savior, God will provide for you. Jesus came to save the world, and he did. Amen. Amen. Right. All right. Now, here, Santa isn't coming back. Jesus is coming back. And here, of course, we have Santa with his reindeer, and, of course, we have Jesus coming back. And he's riding on a white, snowy white horse, and he's coming back with us. And, of course, in the rapture will happen, too, we'll, we'll go. But the point I'm trying to make, a lot of people think Santa Claus is it. Santa Claus comes once a year. Jesus comes to live in our heart when we accept him. Santa Claus makes a list of, look who's naughty and who's nice. And, of course, his, he comes from the legend uh, from uh, St. Nick, who was a man who went about giving gifts and doing good things. And, of course, it's expanded over the centuries. And the reindeer, it's really funny because uh, he's coming with the reindeer. Look what Jesus is coming back with. And he also coming back with angels. I think that's better. And, anyway, he's making, Santa makes a list of who's naughty and who's nice. Well, Jesus knows who's naughty and nice. And he still loves you. Santa Claus won't bring you a gift. Jesus is the ultimate gift. And he comes to live inside of us. And we're going to hear a little bit more about that in a few minutes about how uh, Jesus is the ultimate gift and what he provided for us. You know, you can get things under the tree. Maybe this, you want something, you want it real bad, and you've seen it, and, oh, it's the hottest item, especially if it's a toy. And, but you know what? Next year you'll want something different. But I can tell you, when you get Jesus, he's the answer to everything. He gives you everything. He gives you the tools to get whatever it is you need and want. And he, he, he makes you when you leave this earth, that you'll be able to go to a real heaven and not a real hell. And so Jesus is the ultimate gift. He is. He's the one who knows. He's, he's real. And, you know, the legend of, of Santa Claus is a good one in terms that a lot of people enjoy it. But Jesus is not. He's real. And he is coming back. Nobody knows when, but he is coming back soon. All right. Now. Um, we're going to talk about, Mary has something to share with you. Amen. About the free gift of God. Okay, the free gift of God. The first gift that you need to receive, yeah. The, some, peop, some people let their kids open one gift on Christmas Eve night and then the rest Christmas morning. However you do it, the first gift you need from God is this one, salvation. Yeah. Jesus is the ultimate gift he mm -hmm. is the best gift mm -hmm. but you got to receive salvation first amen it's kind of like when you play i know we had this on one show a baseball game if you're playing baseball and you hit a home run and you run around first base sec then go to second go to third come in home if you didn't touch first base it's not a home run you have to touch the bases the first thing you need to do is get saved. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He is the ultimate gift because he came from heaven. The comforts, the beauty, the glory of heaven down to earth. It's kind of like going from earth to hell. I know it's not the same, but he went there too. Jesus is the ultimate gift because he gave up everything to spill his blood and pay for your sins. Not only did he give up his life in heaven and come here to earth, he lived. He lived on earth for 30 some years and he did so many miracles. The books of the world cannot contain the miracles he did for people here on earth. That's how good Jesus is. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from God. Amen? Every good gift. 
you know, and it's like he lived to show you how you're supposed to live. Mm -hmm. He loved people. He prayed for people. He healed people. Amen. Well, he, he didn't have to pray. He, he spoke over them and he told them yeah. what to do, what not to do. That's Amen. Because right. he is God. Amen. But Jesus is the ultimate gift. If for my relatives, I want them to have the ultimate gift for Christmas. Not that they got money, not that they got a new car, a new house. I want them to receive Jesus as their Savior. Amen. Amen. That's right. That is the gift of all gifts. And that's a gift to Jesus, too, because when you receive him, he receives you. And that's what he wants more than anything, is to be reconciled with all of us and have us be part of his family. All right, here's our story. And this is Sherry, and she's a little lamb. And Sherry had lots and lots of questions. In fact, her mother used to go, oh, Lord, here's this little girl has got all these questions. She would ask questions, and she would wonder about this, and she wondered about that. And she even wondered about the Messiah, because she'd even heard about him, too. In fact, she went and asked questions of the shepherd. Of course, the shepherd didn't understand her. He tried to talk to her, and she thought, you know, they always say that shepherds or humans think that sheep are stupid but I can't understand this guy and he doesn't seem to understand me maybe sheep are smart and the shepherd isn't that smart but anyway she tried to talk to him and she'd ask him questions well one night while they were all in the field all of a sudden the sky filled with light and there were angels and they were proclaiming that Jesus was born and and they were talking about him and and oh there was such excitement at first the shepherds were just terrified and so were the sheep and yet they continued to listen to the um, the angels talk and say joy to the world in such great times the things that were happening with with Jesus being born and there was this great star that they saw and they uh, shepherd felt we must go see what this is and so they wanted to go see the the baby that was born that the angels had told them about so they gathered the sheep together and they started moving in that direction well Sherry's mom didn't know where Sherry was because as usual Sherry kind of wandered off and she didn't realize it but little Sherry saw the star heard the angels and said I'm going to grant him I'm going to find him when we first want to find him and of course her mother thought what if she's lost I can't find her. What will happen? Something terrible could happen to her. So the shepherds pressed on, and you can see her looking for her daughter, and she could not find her daughter, and she was so upset. She said, oh, my gosh, this wonderful thing that's happening, and here I might lose my daughter. How terrible is this? And she didn't know what to think. So they continued, the shepherd continued to move them on, and they were getting further and further away from their familiar pasture. And they went to one building. The shepherd went, and they said, no. Nope. No, nope. uh, you need to go over there where that big star is over that stable. There's a baby that was born over there. And that's what everybody's talking about. So they went on and the shepherd led them further and they came to the light and just light shining down on the stable. And in there was a man and a woman and they had this baby. And all of a sudden, Sherry's mom saw her, her daughter and her daughter said, see, I, did, I went to see the star. I found it. And see, the little baby, well, the mother and, and the father, they seemed to understand sheep. And that little baby smiled at me and even put his little hand toward me. And so uh, Sherry's mother was so ecstatic because she knew that her daughter was safe and she knew this was really special. She didn't really know what, what happened, but she knew and had heard stories about a Messiah and that when he came, they wouldn't even have to sacrifice little lambs anymore, that he would be the sacrifice for all of them. And that's what all the sheep were hoping for because they didn't like it. They took the best, the most perfect lamb to sacrifice and shed the blood. And they even used to take that blood from that lamb and pour it on the people. And that would only be good for about a year. But they knew that when Jesus came or the Messiah came, that's what they called him, they wouldn't have to do that anymore. And so there they were. And it seemed like uh, the shepherd had given Sherry and her mother to the man and, and his wife and that baby. And they were so happy because they knew in their heart the Messiah had come. And you know what? He has come. And he has given life for us. And if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is the time to do it. That's the best gift you could ever give Jesus is to give him your life. And just say, Jesus, I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if we'll 
believe in her heart and say with her mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, we can be saved. And the Bible also says in Romans 10, uh, 13, that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You're whosoever, right? Of course you are. So you can call on his name. And the Bible says all of sin and come short of the glory of God. And, and it also talks in Romans about how the wages of sin is death. So the only way when we leave this planet to go to a very real heaven is through accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And you can do this now. And you might be watching this and you might be backslid even or you might be sitting with your kids and think, oh, I don't know if I've done that. This is the time to do it. So let's all say this together. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I do believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. I believe with my heart and I'm saying with my mouth so I know I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. And thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now, Mary has something she wants to share. Amen. Para los niños que hablen español, sabes que en la Biblia, en Romanos 10, 9, dice que si confesares con tu boca que Jesús es el Señor y creyeres en tu corazón que Dios le levantó de los muertos, serás salvo. Amén. ¿Por qué? Bueno, versículo 10. Porque con el corazón se cree para justicia, pero con la boca se confiesa para salvación. Entonces vamos a confesar, repito conmigo, Señor Jesús, creo en ti. Eres el Hijo de Dios. Pagaste el precio por mis pecados al ser mm -hmm. crucificado. Creo en tu sacrificio de amor. Mm -hmm. Me arrepiento de todos mis pecados y te pido perdón. Gracias Jesús por perdonarme y darme la vida eterna. Si has orado esta oración, por favor, que nos mande una carta a 2222 Avenida L. Galveston, Texas, 77550, porque queremos mandar algo a ti. Es la iglesia Chosen Generation, linaje escogido en español. Amén.